Hello and welcome to Virtualize Every. This afternoon we're going to be taking a look at how to set up a true NAS NFS share and link it to Proxmox. So the first thing we're going to need to do here to take you through the entire process of setting up your NFS share is to add a drive here from Proxmox. And as we discussed before, we've not reached the point of bringing in controllers or drives from the outside as a PCI pass-through. We're still looking at how to do TrueNAS here on Proxmox by adding hardware in from the, pass, the Proxmox pass-through setup. But with that being said, this tutorial still would be able to be used if you were bringing in hardware or doing this on bare metal. You just wanna go ahead and skip this step of adding a drive. You'll also be able to use this tutorial later on where if you already had your shares all set up, but I'm gonna take you through that process. So here, if you were bringing in a drive or a virtual drive from Proxmox, we're gonna to want to click on hardware and you can see I already have some drives added in here, but we're gonna add another drive in so that we can do this with a fresh drive for the sake of this tutorial. So we're gonna click add and hard drive. We're gonna select SATA. The storage location here for me is gonna be storage. Yours might be something like local LVM or local ZFS or some other drive you set up in like my instance here storage. For a drive size, we're going to add 300 gigs. Now this is relatively small and I realize this, but this is meant to be a demo system and just for, you know, the filming of this video. If you do have an SSD that you're using, you want to make sure you click discard to help protect and lengthen the life of your SSD. At this point, we can go ahead and click add and Proxmox is going to create that drive. If we click here on details, it'll give us the details of what's happening. And you can notice that it's formatting a QCOW2 image this, of the size of 300 gigs onto our storage location. When this all finishes here at this detail screen, it's gonna say task okay. And I'll be back with you when that process has happened. So task OK has happened. It took about 30 seconds here. So we'll go ahead and close this screen. Now, if you hadn't have opened details, you would have just seen the screen end and go away. Start up our true NAS virtual machine by clicking start. As you can see, I did that a moment ago. So our system started up and going up here to summary, since we did enable our guest agent in the startup of this machine, or when we set it up, we'll see an IP address show up here. Once that IP address shows up, we know the system's up and running and we're good to start interacting with it in our web interface. All right, so we now have our IP address loaded. So we can head over to the tab. I've already pre-opened this tab but we will need to now log in. I'm still using my admin credentials that were set up during the installation for this video. So it's gonna be admin and the password that we set up during installation. Now here we are at the dashboard. The first step for creating this NFS share is to create a new storage pool and much the same way we did it for the SMB share, we're going to click on storage. And this time, since there already is a share, we're gonna click on create pool. If you don't have a share, you'll see somewhere in the middle of this screen, create pool. Now, since I have one, it's gonna be in the upper right-hand corner. We'll give it a name. I'll just call it backup today. It really doesn't matter whatever name you desire. And I'm gonna hit next. For a layout, we're gonna hit striped, even though we're not using two drives it's going to be the best option. Mirror is gonna require two drives and so is RAID Z1. So Striped is going to be our best choice here. Now, depending on what your system's doing and whatnot, you probably want to have a backup drive and TrueNAS likes to let you know that but we don't have to have it. Now clicking on drive size, you can see our two different drives here. We're gonna choose our 300 gig and we're going to 
leave everything else as default. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip down here to review. I'm leaving out all of these. I don't need to set cache drives up or anything else. This is a really simple form of creating this, of creating a drive like this. So we are just going to look at it. We have one drive stripe, 300 gigs. Estimated raw capacity is going to be 298 gigs. We'll go ahead and click create pool at this point, confirm and continue. And now we have our newest backup drive right here. And you can see that we're using 0%. And you can see our nice exclamation point that I just spoke about that we have no redundancy on this striped drive. Now that we have our storage pool created, it's time to create our data set. And to create our data set, we're going to go ahead and click up on backup since we already have another drive called data. We want to make sure TrueNAS knows that we want to interact with the backup drive. And we're going to move up here to add data set. Here at the add data set screen, we'll give it a new name. And I'll just call mine Proxmox today. And we're going to go ahead and inherit our sync settings. Inherit will be all fine here. Moving down through all of these settings that are default will also be fine. We're not really tweaking this or setting up any performance or anything outside of a basic system here. This is meant to be a starting tutorial. So at this point, we'll hit save. What that's going to do is add another drive called Proxmox to our backup pool. With Proxmox created, we can now go down to share. And here at share, you notice that we have SMB running, but we don't have NFS running. And this video is, of course, about creating an NFS share. So here at that, we're going to hit add and we're going to move through our file structure here making sure that we go to mnt and then backup and lastly our proxmox folder that we just created we don't need to give it a description although it's probably good practice and we don't need to at this time fill out network settings or host settings so we should be able to click save and we'll be able to now enable the service. And what that's going to do is start the NFS share service at MNT Backup Proxmox, where our SMB is going to be MNT Data and Share. Now that we've created the NFS share here at the sharing screen, and we've enabled the NFS service here in TrueNAS, we should be able to head over to our Proxmox web interface. Here at our Proxmox web interface, we're going to select data center and then select storage. Now you can see here that I've already added my disk of storage and I've talked about that once before here in this video. But you're probably going to have local and local LVM or ZFS or ButterFS depending on how you set up your Proxmox server when you did your initial installation. We're going to go click add here and we're going to select NFS. Now for ID, it's going to be whatever we want to call our particular drive, just like I called my last drive storage. I'm going to call this one backup, and then we're going to give this our server's IP address of 192.168.348 for our particular server. Your server most likely will have a different IP address. Now, if everything's filled out here correctly, here at export, we'll go ahead and get that nice path MNT backup Proxmox that's pulled in from our TrueNAS server. We'll go ahead and select that as the NFS share we want to use. And for contents, we're going to use this for backups. So we'll go ahead and highlight backup so it turns blue. And we don't want to use disk images, so we'll click on disk images and turn it to white. Now at this point, we can go ahead and create this NFS share. If you did have a cluster, you would want to determine whether you want this share to go through to one node or if you want it to go through to all nodes. The default setting is all, no restrictions. 
But if we wanted it to only go through to one node, we click on the drop down, select our Proxmox node, which is the name of my particular server. If you use a default install, it'll be called PVE. I'm going to hit add at this point and it'll create that share. Now we should be able to back up to this. I don't have a container, but the steps for a container will be very, very similar to the steps here for a VM. We'll select this management VM, which is a fairly small VM on this particular computer that I used for interacting with some of my network because I had to be on a VLAN in this Proxmox server at that period in time was able to access that particular VLAN. I've actually disabled now because of security. But regardless, moving on from that discussion, we'll select backup and here we have our backup screen. We can click backup now. Under storage, we can select where we want to do and again we can look at our true NAS backup that we talked here. We want to take a screenshot and we just want to store the guest name. If we wanted to store something else like say the VM ID, we could actually put a comma and the VM ID here you're going to see me just copy and paste the possible template variables from below up here. So it's guest name, comma, VM ID, notifications will be auto, and we'll use the ZSTD compression. And we'll go ahead and click backup, and the backup process is going to happen. Now, if we're unable to write to this drive for some reason, you will see this fail. So I'll be back with you to show you that we successfully wrote to this ZFS share. Now that our backup is finished and we see task OK, you can see that our configuration inside of TrueNAS worked and we've successfully set up a NFS backup using TrueNAS. What I'm going to do now is close out this screen and off camera I'm going to quickly set up a container so we can look at backing up a container as within the last couple of hours I actually had a viewer post comments on a older NFS share video that backups weren't working for containers. So I'll be back with you once that container is set up. So I can go ahead and show you how to back up containers to your TrueNAS NFS share. Off camera, I went ahead and created a container here on the Proxmox server. And let's go ahead and try to back it up on our TrueNAS NFS backup here on our Proxmox server using Proxmox web interface. So the first thing we're going to need to do is select this container and you can notice the container is turned off. There are some possible areas where a container that is running can have snapshots or images taken of it and be backed up all it is operating. But for the sake of this particular tutorial, I'm not even going to worry about starting this container and I'm going to go ahead and back it up. But I did want to make you aware the container is not operating at the moment for this backup. Scrolling down here, we're going to click backup and then we'll hit backup now just like we did for the VM. We're going to select our true NAS backup, leaving our information and we'll press backup. Now this container backup should happen relatively quickly. But let's go ahead and wait until the task finished happens, which you can see it did. And if we close this window now to see if our backup was successful, we can go ahead and select our backup images from our disk true NAS backup right here. Click backups and you can see our backup. We can even try to restore one of these before I conclude the end of this video to do so. Let's go ahead and click on our container backup and we do have to change a few parameters because you notice our container that we're going to be restoring is 104 but we can click restore and this process will be the same if we were doing a VM. It's going to automatically change it to 105 and give it a storage location. Our storage location we'll be using today is storage 
and let's press restore and there you have it task okay we were able to restore a container from a backup the same process will be true for a vm if you found this video informational and useful about truenas consider viewing some of our other truenas videos they'll be releasing weekly we're in the fourth one so this is the fourth uh, release of our truenas videos we do have a playlist if you check on our channel page of all released TrueNAS videos here on Proxmox. As always, have a good night and consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to get more content from Virtualize Everything and to help us grow. Have a good night.